Hey everyone, it's great to be here um, in Seattle, uh, where I guess it was sunny just a second ago. Um, so it, it, this is clearly a time when understanding complexity, understanding other people, when actually being able to walk in someone else's shoes is really important. So um, when I founded, after being uh, a journalist working for other people, and then I decided to work for myself and I created my own nonprofit media company called the Futuro Media Group based in Harlem, come visit us anytime. We produce Latino USA in the thick, if you're not listening to it, um, the newest political podcast being featured on the front page of iTunes, hello. <laughs> We're beating Rush Limbaugh and Anderson Cooper and Meet the Press, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we produce Humanizing America, um, and we produce work for PBS. But the reason why I formed the company was actually because I knew that myself, as a Mexican immigrant, growing, raised in the south side of Chicago, had a very particular and different perspective, and I wanted to bring that into my journalism and to devote our journalism to really bringing these diverse, diverse voices and, um, and bringing our perspective into our storytelling. Of course, independent journalism now, more than ever, matters because we don't have an agenda except to tell you what we see and to be fair. So what we do at Futuro Media Group is that we do this very immersively with our reporting. Um, and it's why we just got great news. Our radio audience grew by 43% in the last year. Um, how we reckon at this particular moment is that we're diving deeper into our connection with local communities and local stations. So given that we're in Seattle, um, I wanted to play a little bit of radio. My God, you guys are like so getting radio, Krista, right here. Uh, and then now you're gonna get, we're gonna listen communally. Um, if you wanna close your eyes, you can, but we will have some pictures. Um, this is a story that we produced true to our form of looking at untold stories. Um, so when we found out that right here in Washington State, the Yakima Nation on this Native American reservation, um, it's home to about 11,000 Yakima people and almost three times as many Latinos. So you have a reservation, a stone's throw from here, a Native American reservation where the majority population is Latino. Let's take a listen. Now, those tensions between her Mexican and her Native American communities were very real for Rena. But one person who says he's trying to remind them of what these two communities have in common is Matt Tamaskin. He's the legislative liaison for the tribal government that we heard from earlier. And he's also a teacher at the tribal school. A couple years ago, Matt was talking to his Native students, and he wanted to see what they knew about Mexican culture. Just a heads up, you're about to hear some offensive language. When I say Mexican, what do you think? So all of those, those negative annotations came up. Wetback, you know, this, that, whatever, cholos, whatever, you know, just those stereotypes. But I started educating them and I said, you know what? They're indigenous just like you and me. They're from the south and we're from the north. We need to realize that, that the border was created by the white people. A few weeks later, Matt brought an indigenous Mexican congresswoman to his class. At first, she spoke to the students in Spanish while someone translated. But then she switched to Purepecha, an indigenous language, and the interpreters sat down. And he couldn't interpret it. So that's what I told him. It's like, we speak English. Down there, they speak Spanish. They, they're not Spanish. They're Purepecha. And when you say that to the people you know, there is a brotherhood between us, there is a sisterhood, and they say, yes, I believe it, or they say, I don't think so. It's a little bit of both. They don't believe it yet, but yet, you know, when they heard her, they knew the difference. So my classroom full of students that I was teaching government at that time, it clicked, you know, that you know, they are indigenous just like us. It's undeniable that Mexicans have transformed this area. The Hispanic population in Yakima County, which includes the reservation, has quadrupled in the last generation, from about 25,000 to well over 100,000 today. And Matt says Latinos have become a convenient scapegoat for the spread of crime and drugs. 
Toppenish and Wapato, the two main towns on this tribal land, have both had trouble with addiction and gang violence as the Latino community has grown. And a lot of Yakima people have absorbed mainstream stereotypes about Latinos. That's what we were told by the dominant societies. They're, they're bad, they're no good. So that, that, that learned hatred is still there. So we need to come to a point where let's break that cycle. But even for Matt Tamaskin, it's not easy to see the towns where he grew up looking more and more like Mexico. In downtown Toppenish, the reservation's biggest town, there are Mexican businesses everywhere. Restaurants, bakeries, music shops, car repair. When I'm going out to lunch with my friends, it's like, we're going to have Mexican, Mexican, or uh, Mexican. If you think about it, you know, what, what does Toppenish have to offer her other than Mexican food? For some people, there's a feeling of a takeover on the reservation, a second wave of Mexican and Mexican-American settlers taking the place of the white settlers who moved in 100 years ago. Someone who hears a lot of that resentment bubbling up day to day is Carla Hernandez. Carla and her sister are managers at Western Gas, a gas station in Toppenish. And outside, there are these murals of Native American dancers. Inside, it's a convenience store and a taqueria where literally everything is in Spanish. Carla is from Jalisco, and she came to the U.S. when she was 15. It was a gift for my 15th birthday, for quinceañera. Um, my, I always wanted to have a big party, but I knew we couldn't afford it. And my mom asked me if I wanted to come over and visit with my family, with my grandma, and I just didn't go back. That first visit was to Arizona. But her father was a migrant worker in Toppenish. So before long, she ended up on the Yakima Reservation. And she likes it. You get to know everybody. You see their kids grow older. I mean, you just feel comfortable. You just, I mean, even though they cuss at you sometimes, it still feels like home. The they Carla is talking about are a subset of her Native American customers. Regulars who come in every afternoon to buy beer and to drink in a park nearby. Let's say that I don't want to sell alcohol to someone who's already intoxicated. Then they answer back to you and say, you went back, go back to your country. So that's when you well, that's when you feel more the resentment. If they don't get their way in anything, then they, their attitude changes. Then they start insulting you. And then they start making it a point for you to know that you're in their land. How often do you get insulted and told you shouldn't be around? Once a week? Once a month? Mm, I would say it happens once a day. So what we, you've heard this term complexity today. So we're approaching our journalism by diving into that complexity without fear and with a lot of love, frankly, and a lot of authenticity. Um, I'm actually going to go off script now, and I have another two minutes there. Um, because what we just heard today is really calling on all of us to to be as Titus. Yo, Titus. Um, I'm going to quote him, sort of. If I can help one person in one conversation, I will have touched a piece of the solution for our country. So I'm like Titus, um, a little bit older, and Mexican, but from Chicago. Um, so we're like brother and sister-ish. Um, you know, I... I I am critical across the board of the Democrats, of the Republicans. I'm critical across the board. So my job is to have those complicated conversations. That is, in fact, my job. I, um, I get paid to do it. I thought maybe sometimes I engage in conversations with people who are completely different and who are prone to see me as different than them and perhaps their enemy or their invader. Maybe I'm still trying to prove to them or to me that I'm really an American, you know? So I'm like, hey, Titus, you know, is that what's motivating me? I'm like, I love talking to you, but am I just trying to tell you, see me, see me? I was born in Mexico, but I've been living here my whole life and you still don't see me. So I have those conversations all the time. In fact, some of you, God, I can't believe I'm crying. It's because I'm on East Coast time. <laughs> um, 
Some of you may have seen a viral moment that I had on MSNBC when um, Steve Cortez, who is a surrogate for the Trump campaign, now the Trump presidency, um, used the term illegal in reference to undocumented immigrants. And I had a moment where I explained to him that illegal is not a noun, that, um, that the reason why I don't call undocumented people illegal is because I learned from Elie Wiesel, the survivor of the Holocaust, may he rest in peace, that there is no such thing as an illegal human being. And you know, 10 million people saw that when it went viral on Fusion. So, but the interesting thing, you know, and people, people were like, all like, yo, Maria, you school him. Oh, look at Maria Hinojosa, take this dude down, watch the schooling, you know, and it did. It was clickbaity and it went viral. And you know what, after you go viral, nothing happens. <laughs> you wake up and it's like, same old. Um, Steve Cortez and I, have gone out to breakfast. I've invited him to my class. He's coming to an event that I'm doing at DePaul in Chicago where I'm also a professor because I'm Mexican and I never say no to work. Um, I'm glad I'm making you guys laugh. Um, I sit down with Steve Cortez to understand. So for me, reckoning is understanding. Reckoning is learning with humility but at the same time saying to my colleagues, we come from a place of respect, but if you treat us with disrespect, then why should we as journalists be sending our top journalists into the White House press room to be treated this way? So respect, love, me being able to be with people most unlike me. Reckoning is understanding and with humility. The lift that I took today the guy was like, oh yeah, my dad was a KKK Klansman. I was like, seriously? He was like, yeah, he was a Klansman. But you know, my mom divorced him after I was born. I was the last of seven. We burned all of his Klans robes. And he said, and my sister married a black man and I married a Native American woman. And so to me, reckoning is understanding everything of what that moment means. Repair, to me, is every day. Every day repairing our relationships with everyone around us. From your partner, your husband, to the person who's sitting next to you on a plane who may have voted for Donald Trump. People say, oh, Maria, she just does that because she's a Mexican immigrant. She does that kind of journalism. Actually, I do it because I'm, Amer I'm an American citizen. And I had to raise this hand and say, I'm part of you. <laughs>